All right, what's good, y'all? Once again, it's Stuart V for Venom Sports, and you know we spit that fire. Man, what an incredible week for college football. I think we got a lot of our questions answered about where teams are at this point. Man, who would have thought, you know, LSU would have gone down in the swamp a couple of weeks ago? You know, we, we're talking about the big win LSU had over Auburn. We're talking about the big win they had over Miami. And then in a, in a very unlikely fashion against an anemic uh, University of Florida offense, LSU goes down. That just goes to show how competitive the SEC conference uh, can be on a week in and week out basis. You know, you can never count a team out. You know, outside of Alabama, I think Alabama is playing on a different kind of level. You know, over other teams, I mean, they score at will. They, I mean, we they are largely untested, but we see what they're doing every week. They they have an incredible football team. I I think it's going to be very difficult for any team to game plan against the scheme of Alabama. So that's a whole nother genre of football at this point. But we're talking about the rest of the SEC. You know, we're talking about LSU going down uh, against L, uh, going down against Florida. We're also talking about Kentucky, man. You know, Kentucky was was on a roll. Uh, they had a nice win over Florida. Uh, they had the nice win over Mississippi State, you know, because I kind of thought that Mississippi State would be, you know, the team that would beat Kentucky. I thought Mississippi State was a little bit more physical uh, than Kentucky. I thought, uh, you know, with Colin Hill and Nick Fitzgerald, I thought that they would have imposed their will against Kentucky, but it was the exact opposite. Kentucky played an incredible game, beat Mississippi State, but then – against Texas A&M, you know, you just never know. When you go on these road games in the SEC, it's always tough. You know, it's never a gimme. It's never, you know, uh, written in stone that you're going to beat a team. I don't care what you've been doing statistically. I don't care what you've been doing, you know, offensively, what kind of role you feel that you're on. But when you take these you take these trips in the SEC, things starts to start to get very uh, interesting. Same thing with Auburn, you know what I'm saying? Going down to Mississippi State. Now, Auburn's offense has been struggling mightily, so people kind of thought, you know, even though Auburn was the number eight team in the country, people still kind of thought that this game was a little on the iffy side. You know, for Auburn, Jarrett Stidham still hasn't reached that stride or that peak that he had uh, last season. He still hasn't lived up to the expectations that a lot of people thought that he would have so far this year. And it showed up glaringly uh, in Starkville. I think he struggled mightily. I mean, he at times he just seemed inept at best. I know a lot of y'all remember J uh, Jeremy Johnson at Auburn from a couple of years ago when he was a highly touted guy. You know, people kind of thought, you know, he was the second coming of Cam Newton. And, you know, had an oh, I mean, it's crazy how similar these two guys' paths are, are starting to kind of unfold. You know, had a promising game against Louisville. Jeremy Johnson, that is had a promising game against Louisville, and then you had the downward spiral where people were looking for answers like this was the guy that was supposed to be the Heisman, you know, competing for the Heisman, and now he's making a uh, bad decision on basic passes, i.e. for for uh, Jared Stidham, the interception against LSU, the first one. That's what, honestly, guys, that's what started all of this. You take away the interception that uh, that Jared Stidham had against LSU, and you might have a whole nother quarterback. That interception right there, I think, took the confidence out of Jared Stidham because, to be fair with you, he hasn't played right since that play. He has struggled mightily since that play. He's not reading coverage as well. He's not. His pocket presence is kind of shaky at best. It's, I've watched film on him at times when he could have stepped up into the pocket he actually rolls back into the pressure or he's missing guys who are obviously open and which leads me to the biggest concern as as we go into the stretch of this season especially for the Auburn Tigers is you know is it time for a quarterback change is it time for 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 Auburn to really start looking at you know some other options at this point because Jared Stidham is not playing with any degree of confidence he's not playing with any degree of concern the urgency is not there when Auburn got up you know when Auburn was down 13 to 3 there was nothing about Jared Stidham that told me that he was going to be the guy that brought Auburn back out of this slump I mean let's just be real I I knew when Auburn got down 13 to 3 that the game was that it was over because Jared Stidham has not possessed 
the ability to be that comeback from behind quarterback. I don't understand it. Um, as a matter of fact, even when I look at last season, when the game was in his hands, he just couldn't do it. He absolutely could not do it. So now I'm looking at Auburn as they enter the stretch. They start the stretch, and they face Tennessee this week. There's some people in media outlets thinking like, damn, you know, Tennessee could actually beat Auburn. And rightfully so because the Auburn Tigers cannot score. You know, some people blame the offensive line. Some people blame coaching. Some people blame, you know, all these other elements. But I have to look at the quarterback at this point because there have been plenty of opportunities where if Jared Stidham would have stepped up in the pocket and made a quarterback decision, he would have been all right. But he, he does not do that. Overthrowing a wide-open Darius Slayton on a trick play that you just can't run again because it's not going to work. Wide open. That's one touchdown right there, right? Another one that I, I saw, which I had to highlight on this, another one that I saw is that, you know, this was uh, late in the third quarter, Mississippi State coming on a cornerback blitz leaving Darius Slayton wide open in the spot where the cornerback came from, Jared Stidham didn't see it because his eyes are now, you know, he, he, he doesn't have that abundance mindset when it comes to playing quarterback. You know, he's, he's worried about the pressure. He's worried about, you know, um, he's worried about the pressure. He's worried about, you know, if things are not just lined up perfectly uh, for Jared Stidham. It ain't happening. That's where we are. That's where Auburn, the Auburn Tigers are quarterback-wise. If the, if, if the line doesn't block perfectly, if the guy is pretty much not wide open, there's no ingenuity, there's none of that stuff going on, you know, he can't do it. So I do feel at Auburn that it's it could potentially be time for a quarterback change. A lot of people think I'm crazy. They're like, no, the offensive line sucks. All this other stuff, no, it's no way possible that we should. Jared Stidham is our guy, you know, that kind of craziness. But you did it to Jeremy Johnson. Jer Jeremy Johnson was your guy, too, in 2016. He really was. He was the guy everybody believed in. But after that performance that he had against LSU where he just completely, I mean, it was one play where Jeremy Johnson threw the ball behind his head, and I think that's when everybody was like, no, nah, this is not the guy we thought, you know, we had. And, and that's where we are with Jared Stidham, honestly. He's not the guy. Unfortunately, he's not the guy that's going to be able to lead Auburn out of their adversities at this point. He's just not the guy. Now, another thing I see is Gus Malzahn likes to run the run-pass option. That means you have the option to run the ball or pass it, right? So when Jared Stidham does his fake, he has the option to either keep it, uh, hand it off, or I guess pass it. But him running is never an option. I saw a couple of opportunities in that Mississippi State game where if he would have just kept it, he would have had like five or six yards untouched. Um, from what I gather from Jared Stidham, he doesn't want to run the football. You know, I think he, he so whatever it is, something that was, you know, whatever was told to him in his recruiting process is not happening at all because he, somebody told him, hey, you ain't going to have to run the football because he don't do it, you know. But I will look forward to seeing what comes down the pipeline for Auburn. You know, I, I really wish, you know, that's my alma mater. You know what I'm saying? I really wish for them the best. I always, you know, want to see those guys do incredible but right now, I just don't – with Jared Stidham at quarterback, I just don't see that possibility. I just really don't see that possibility. I think they beat Tennessee. I think they beat Ole Miss. I think they beat uh, Texas A&M. I really do think they win those football games. Everything is set up favorably. They got a bye week, you know, in those – you know, in that stretch, you know, and, and could possibly be 7-2 and two going into that Georgia game. But, you know, something will have to give. And, and I just think – a decision is going to have to be made as to whether Jared Stidham is going to continue to be the quarterback for this this football team. I, I don't think he's engaged. I think he's lost uh, respect for his peers on the sideline. He's not that vocal leader. You know, I think it's time to try something different. You know, I'm not saying just 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 eliminate Jared Stidham as an option altogether, but I just think it's time to try something different. 
Once again, my name is Stuart V for Venom Sports, and you know we spit that fire. I love SEC football, but I love the Auburn Tigers, War Eagle to all the Auburn fans out there. And, uh, you know, I'll continue to give this non-objective content because I think, you know, just because you're a fan of a team doesn't mean you necessarily have to, you know, be so diehard that you're not honest about what's going on. And right now, Auburn is in a little trouble, uh, you know, as they head into the stretch. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. You all have a spectacular, spectacular, spectacular Tuesday afternoon. Y'all take it easy.